Where did Bigfoot come from? Where did the Loch Ness Monster come from? Where did the Mothman come from? Have you ever asked yourself any of these questions and Googling was just um, too hard to, to do and to read about? Well, I am your man. Welcome to the first installment of Gaming with the Cryptids, where we take a cryptid such as Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster, and we explain the history and the lore of that creature, and then we of course pair it with a video game that matches up as good as we can with that creature, uh, and we play through the game as we explain all of that. And to start all off, let's go with the Jersey Devil, the legendary demon of Pine Barrens, New Jersey. And this one was a pretty easy one to pair it with because there's, a, uh, there's actually a PlayStation 1 game called Jersey Devil. So let's get started. So we load the game up here and it's clearly a modernized take on the Jersey Devil. I mean, even look at the title screen. It looks like some sort of um, city slicking devil. I mean, it's not definitely not going to be taking place back in the 1800s like the original uh, Legends of the Jersey Devil. So we start the game up and we have some sort of a, uh, looks like a carrot and a caveman and um, maybe like a pumpkin boy. I'm not sure. And of course we get introduced to the uh, PlayStation 1 version of the Jersey Devil, which I'm um, not quite tr sure if it's true to the, uh, the legend of the Jersey Devil. There are some similarities. Uh, they both have uh, wings like that. They both have the little uh, forked tail such as that. But the real Jersey Devil, um, it has more of a horse-like head and uh, let's have this loud screech. Of course it's going to have um, hooved feet and um, I don't think that what you would call these are hooved feet. Those look like some regular old uh, human feet on that Jersey Devil. And also the real Jersey Devil has these little uh, T-Rex arms. And uh, those look like some regular arms to me. The real Jersey Devil is not a superhero. And this definitely looks more like a uh, superhero. But let's go ahead and get into the main game here. Now the Jersey Devil has been around for Lord knows how long. Probably since New Jersey itself. And he's located in a place called the Pine Barrens, New Jersey. Now the Pine Barrens... There was a special guest who came to visit the Pine Barrens back in um, the early 1800s. And this fella, his name was Joseph Bonaparte. Now you probably know the last name Bonaparte pretty darn well. He had a really famous brother who um, got himself into a, a lot of trouble over in Europe. And that's going to be Napoleon. But anyway, so you have uh, old Joseph Bonaparte here. And he's in the Pine Barrens. And he's out um, hunting one day in the um, Pine Barrens out there. He's got his gun. You know, He's going for the... Uh, through the woods, through probably some of the swampy area. And uh, he sees these hoof prints, you know, little hoofs. And he's like, ah, oh, it must be some sort of a rogue uh, donkey out in this general area. And he continued on his little path, of course, you know, searching for this lost donkey of sorts. And he comes across this loud screech. He's like, oh my gosh, my ears. And he looks up and he is face to face with the Jersey Devil after he hears that screech. And of course, you know, he doesn't know what to do. He's, he is literally just frozen in fear. Because, I mean, any of us get face to face with the devil. We're going we're gonna to freeze in fear like that. It's just uh, human nature. Joseph Bonaparte was not, not special in that way. And so he's frozen in fear. And the uh, Jersey Devil, I guess, you know, continues screeching. And then after a little bit, the Jersey Devil, um, he takes flight. He literally just flies off the ground and leaves. And Joseph Bonaparte is still just in shock. I mean, he had a gun. Didn't even shoot at it. But he was terrified of what happened. And so, after this, Joseph Bonaparte heads back into town, and he begins telling people, he's like, hey, uh, when I was out and about, I encountered something pretty darn, pretty darn special out there. And he starts telling and describing it, and everybody in the town's like, oh yeah, we know what you're talking about. You encountered the, uh, the Jersey Devil. And um, he's like, well, what's the Jersey Devil? And they begin to tell him, essentially, the lore of the Jersey Devil. Now, there's a uh, decent bit of lore. It goes all the way back into the... Come on. Come on. Anyway, the Lord of Jersey Devil goes all the way back into the, uh, I guess, probably the uh, early 1700s, or at least the mid-1700s. So the Jersey Devil was nothing new when Joseph Bonaparte came across it. And they told him the Jersey Devil started off more as just simple, um, was just a regular old kid at first. Jersey Devil? Just a regular kid. And the Jersey Devil was a 13th kid of a lady named Jane Leeds. And um, they often called her Mother Leeds because I guess when you have... 13 kids, uh, you know, you get a, a name for being a mother more than just your regular name at that point. But anyway, Mary Leeds had, had 12 kids already, and when she got pregnant with her 13th kid, Mary Leeds was, you know, naturally sort of upset, and she goes, ah, oh, may it be the devil. You know, just probably like saying like a cuss word at the time, but by saying that, you gotta be careful what you wish for, because Mary Leeds, I'm sorry, Jane Leeds, 
had actually just cursed her own child at this point. And so, when the child was born, it seemed like a normal, you know, just a normal kid. However, there we go, get that letter. Gotta get all these letters to open the letter, open the level. But it seemed like a normal kid. But as the kid began to grow older, a few things were a little bit off with this child. It would, um, it would sometimes let out these weird screeching noises. And they noticed that uh, its feet, over time, they stopped looking like regular feet. And they started looking more like, like hooves. And then all of a sudden, like, it grew wings. And they're like, holy cow, this kid is not just a, um, not a regular kid. And so, at this point, they still... They still loved the kid, they still treated the kid with respect, and they still, uh, they were eating supper one night, and they were all at the dinner table, and this kid, who was obviously turning into the devil, let out this loud screech and began attacking the family. And at this point, you know, they, everybody, everyone is startled, they're scared of this, and then all of a sudden the kid jumps up, heads to the chimney, and heads straight up the chimney, chimney, uh, like a reverse Santa, straight out the top, and, um, it's gone, and it flew off into the Pine Barrens. And that was the last time that Jane Leeds ever saw her kid, when it flew up that chimney and out into the Pine Barrens. And this, of course, is the Jersey Devil. And he stayed out there, I guess he has sort of a, um, I don't wanna say infinite life, but it seems like he definitely lives for a really long time. And um, he stayed out there in the Pine Barrens and continued to terrorize hunters and terrorize children and just terrorize people in general and he's still around even to this day still supposedly terrorizing people out in the woods or sometimes on the highway now as well um, but let's get the next level loaded up all right so we have joseph bonaparte seeing the devil come back into the town telling people about it and now we have this whole backstory that just developed probably sort of out of nowhere about where this jersey devil came from and of course Word was spreading like wildfire about this Jersey Devil roaming around out in these uh, Pine Barrens up in, in New Jersey. And you know how it is. When one person sees the Jersey Devil, all of a sudden everyone is seeing the Jersey Devil. And people were seeing the Jersey Devil like crazy. All the way or all around town and whatnot. And the, I guess you call it a pandemic was beginning to take place. But people would say they saw the Jersey Devil, you know, walking down the street. They saw the Jersey Devil flying through the air. They say they uh, they saw the Jersey Devil um, attacking a trolley car. They said they saw the Jersey Devil walk into a bar, talk to the bartender. You know, that sounds, <laughs> sounds like it's like a, a start of some sort of joke. The Jersey Devil uh, walks into a bar. But the Jersey Devil was pretty much everywhere. I mean, it was munching on... Um, you know, farmers' chickens munching on their pigs, terrorizing their um, their turkeys. I mean, the Jersey Devil was just everywhere. You turn around, I mean, you were, if you wanted to be somebody, you saw the Jersey Devil. And it came to a head in 1909, and they decided they're going to assemble a police force to track down and basically capture or kill the Jersey Devil to get people to stop panicking. And so the police force went out. Of course, they were armed with all their guns and such. Oh my gosh. Um, let's take care of this fellow before we, uh, they were armed with all their gun- No! That gummit! Evidently I suck at this game. But they were armed with all their guns and all that, and they started searching through the town, searching through the, um, the Pine Barrens, and they offer a cash reward. They tell people, if you can find and capture the Jersey Devil, we will pay you $10,000. And now that's obviously a lot of money in today's standards, but good lord. You go all the way back into the early 1900s, and that is even more money. So people began to claim that, you know, they had the Jersey Devil. And there was one guy who called the police up and he's like, hey, I have the Jersey Devil in my custody. And so the police, they are all excited. They head out to this fella's house. They walk him back to this little cage he has the, the Jersey Devil captured in. And it turned out he had taken a kangaroo and um, basically put fake wings on the kangaroo and fake hooves on the kangaroo and um, was just trying to claim the reward. But I mean, the whole kangaroo thing just, it brings so many more questions into the uh, into the story about the Jersey Devil. But um, anyway, they had to let that fellow, you know, like, all right, you got, you got a kangaroo, that's pretty bizarre, but that's not the Jersey Devil, that's not what we are looking for. But as time went by and, and no one could actually find the Jersey Devil and actually come across the Jersey Devil, um, at that point, the pandemic or the, the outbreak or the freak out sort of began to stop about the Jersey Devil and sightings got less and less common. They opened the schools back up because they had shut those down out of fear for the Jersey Devil. They opened shops back up because they had shut those down out of fear for the Jersey Devil. 
And as things began to open back up, they, um, the sightings of the Jersey Devil began to drop off a little bit. But every year, you know, pretty much since the mid-1900s, people have seen the Jersey Devil. They, you know, they see it in their fields. They see it, you know, around town. They see it on the roads. People in the 80s would see it when they go out camping and things like that. The last official sighting of the Jersey Devil, um, they got any sort of press, was in 2015. So really not that far back. And um, there was this guy who claimed he had it on camera. And uh, we'll, we'll show his footage here. Yeah, I think we can probably uh, um, write that fella off. <laughs> I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he saw the Jersey Devil. So there are a couple theories of uh, thought here. Does the Jersey Devil even exist? Was this all just an urban legend made up by uh, Joseph Bonaparte that got blown out of proportion? Was it they saw something that you know resembled this, but really wasn't a Jersey Devil, or was it just simply a uh, complete an urban legend? that was made up. Well, there are a few schools of thought right here. The first one is that the Jersey Devil does exist, but it's not actually a devil, it's just simply a sandhill crane. Now, can you imagine that poor bird, the reputation that it gets amongst the bird community when everyone calls it the Jersey Devil? And it's just like, no, I'm just a bird, just like everybody else. But anyway, some people think it's just a, people see the sandhill crane and it looks a little bit like a devil. I guess somehow, you know, those, long langly legs and the and the wings and they think that that of course is the devil i personally don't think that happens too often but i know if i take my glasses off or i don't have my i know if i take my glasses off or i don't have my contacts in i can see some things that aren't exactly um there so that maybe that's happening people poor eyesight are seeing these sandhill cranes and they think that that is the uh jersey devil the other school of thought is that this is actually no creature at all. This is just simply a misunderstanding of a scandal going all the way back into like the 1700s involving, wait for it, Benjamin Franklin. Holy cow. I mean, this is like national treasure type stuff right here. Benjamin Franklin is at the center of the Jersey Devil story. But Benjamin Franklin, he is famous for a lot of things. But one thing that Benjamin Franklin is famous for, holy cow. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out here. Okay, whew. Impressed with our skills, I channeled the inner Benjamin Franklin to take out that fella. But Benjamin Franklin was famous for, obviously, a lot of things. But one thing he's famous for is creating an almanac called Poor Richard's Almanac. But at the time, he wasn't the only one trying to write an almanac. There was another fella who was writing an almanac, and his name was Daniel Leeds. And guess who he is related to? That's right. Jane Leeds of the Jersey Devil Legacy. You know, the one who was supposedly the mother of the, Jersey, of the Jersey Devil. But Daniel Leeds was also writing an almanac. And it was in somewhat competition with Benjamin Franklin's almanac. And so, Benjamin Franklin, trying to, um, you know, sell his almanac better, started digging up some dirt on old uh, Daniel Leeds here. Dadgummit. And he found out that Daniel Leeds... Um, actually was kicked out of the Quaker church because he had uh, created a book of these uh, astrological signs in it. And some people could say that that's, that was from the devil at the time. And so therefore, he started telling people that he got kicked out of the church because he was the devil, you know, the Leeds devil. And then when Daniel Leeds passed away, that really wasn't even the, uh, the end of it there either. When he passed away, Benjamin Franklin continued to spread rumors about Daniel Leeds. And uh, he started telling people that he was still riding the almanac, even though it was his son riding the almanac. That is an awesome looking picture right there that I'm going down to. But anyway, Benjamin Franklin, he was telling people that Daniel Leeds' ghost was now riding the, um, the almanac that Daniel Leeds' son was riding. And so this just spread the rumors even more that Daniel Leeds was some sort of demonic creature or a demonic being. You know, he was a ghost. He was a devil. Like, he was everything, um, essentially bad in the world and so over time people just thought that daniel leeds was the devil and he became the jersey devil who haunted the pine barrens and i don't know i mean there's the benjamin franklin thing is um in, intriguing and it's uh it's possible that's where the legend originated from in any way but um i don't know i sort of tend to think that they there's probably what well, people they're obviously seeing something people aren't just making it up i think they're probably seeing either the uh, misinterpretation of a sandhill crane or they are um, just, you know, letting their imagination run wild when they hear a random noise they don't know about in the woods. 
But either way, the Jersey Devil, it is being seen. It is out and about. It is being seen all the way as of recently, all the way until 2015. So the Jersey Devil, it, it's it's possibly around. But anyway, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll start climbing this tower here, heading up to the, uh, the boss. I'm not really sure what the uh, strategy is here, so I guess I'll just uh, keep on hitting him, I guess. And so do we defeat him? All right, look at that. Got the caveman out of the way. This game actually, um, you know, pretty fun. Like I said, it reminds me of uh, the uh, the Spyro Crash Bandicoot. More Spyro um, and Croc of its generation on here. But it's a fun game, and I could see it definitely doing pretty well if it ever got a remaster. But that wraps up the uh, Legend of the Jersey Devil. What do you think? Do you think um, he exists? Do you think he's a Sandhill Crane? Do you think it's a... Um, extension of Benjamin Franklin's imagination or his scandal that he began to start or do you think people are actually seeing you know the Jersey Devil out there but is there another cryptid you'd like to see me talk about and play a game with at the same time if you'd like to see another cryptid let me know in the comments down below with which cryptid you'd like to see next and of course I'll try to uh, meet some of that criteria for you guys in the upcoming videos but if you enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and as always go out there find a great game to play and just simply have a great rest of the day. And I'm going to keep on going with um, Jersey Devil here.